All right, good morning. Today we're gonna um, video the overheads for a single contrast BE exam. Um, so as far as changing the patient and history taking, that's in a separate video. And I'm also gonna skip the scout image. We're gonna talk about it, um, but I'm not actually gonna do it. So this is literally just gonna be walking and talking through the uh, barium enema exam itself. So I would have already gotten my patient. They would be changed uh, as they like to joke from toes to nose, nothing on a gown open to the back for that. So literally no shoes, socks, nothing um, for this. With the scout exam, you're going to do it just like you would do um, an AP abdomen on the patient. So I, I know my patient already. I would do a tee shot on her. The technique on that would be 80 kVp at 10 mass. And then once I was done with that, I would then set up the room for fluoro. So I'm going to set up, I can't set this control panel for fluoroscopy just because we don't have that capability. But if we did, I would set that up so that we were um, doing fluoro, I would move the bucky all the way to the end of the table. I would end up um, moving the overhead tube out of the way, and I would have the fluoro tower across um, across the patient. And I would already know that my scalp was cleared, so I would get my barium cinema bag set up, and my setup would be on the IV pole. We'll get this one out of the way since we're going to demo a single contrast BE. <clears throat> so with that, I would have 2,500 cc's um, of barium mixed in this. I would add water to it, and then the barium would actually be run down almost to the tip um, so that I wasn't introducing a bunch of air. I would have that ready to go. My patient would already be on the table and I would have um, her in Sims position, which means that she would be lying on her left side with her right knee bent forward. And then I would insert the enema tip. So before we get too far ahead, let me get my patient in here. Good morning. Good morning. We'll let you have a seat on that for me. And then we'll go ahead and lay you back. Good. All right, so remember she is already changed. She has the gown on open to the back and we've already completed the history. Along with normal history, we do have to add three additional questions. Um, one of which is, um, do you have a latex allergy? Secondly, have you had a colonoscopy recently? Because if they did, we have to be concerned about biopsies. And the other question. Iodine? Oh, uh, no, not iodine. Latex allergy? Have you had a colonoscopy? Appendix. Oh, do you yeah. still have your appendix? Good job, good job. A for effort. Or you get it, it. That, not me. So do they still have their appendix? Because in order to deem um, a barium enema complete, um, you have to either reflux barium through the ileocecal valve or fill the appendix. So we wanna know beforehand if they have or don't have one. All right, so. Um, I will get the IR and put it in there, but we'll talk through that. All right. So what we're gonna, what we're gonna do at that point, if I'm ready to, there would not be an IR in here if I was getting ready to tip the patient. I would go through all the floral first. I'm just putting this in for our overheads. So if I was going to tip the patient, I would have my patient roll on her left side. And then she would bend that right knee forward. <clears throat> and then on my hands would be two pairs of gloves so that I could take one pair off and throw those away after I insert the tip. And I would already have the second pair on. On the tip, there would be um, lubrication, some kind of um, lubricant that won't destroy the, um, the retention balloon on there. And the barium bag can be no more than 24 inches above the table, which I said my cheat is usually the barium bag comes to my shoulder. That's the right height for that. We have the cuff later that'll inflate the balloon and then the enema tip itself, okay? So when I'm going to insert that enema tip, I would tell my patient that we're gonna go ahead and insert that tip. Typically, I do have my hand on them um, and I would have her start to breathe in her nose and out her mouth just to kind of relax her abdominal muscles 
and um, get her in the position that I would need to insert that. So go ahead and take in a breath for me in your nose and then blow it out your mouth and just keep continuing to breathe like that. And then when I go to insert the tip, I'm I'm not gonna surprise her, right? Or, yep, I'm not gonna surprise her. I'm gonna warn her that I'm gonna go ahead and insert that. And when I insert that tip, I'm not gonna touch you. I'm just gonna kind of show the direction it would go. That was just to give you some light. So when this tip goes in, it literally kind of goes in. It goes towards the umbilicus and up. And it's not a thought through process. It's just kind of going to guide itself. Um, typically it'll go anywhere between this ridge right here and this balloon. So that gets inserted. And then I would tell her to just keep breathing like that. I'm allowed to do one puff of air to inflate that balloon. And then I would clamp that and I would have the patient roll back on her back with the enema tip inserted. Okay. So we're gonna pretend we did that. And then at that point, the radiologist would come in, we would introduce um, the patient and the radiologist. The radiologist would call for the barium on, I would turn the barium on and tell him barium on. Throughout the procedure, every time he calls for a barium on or barium off, I repeat that and do that accordingly. I'm watching the tubing as the patient is rolling because I'm just gonna put this under your leg. If that was in the patient, when the patient rolls, this tubing and this can get caught up. If this comes off, then the balloon deflates and I lose the tip. So our job is to help the patient, watch the tubing, turn the barium on and off, and assist the radiologist, which sounds overwhelming when you hear it, but really when you're doing it, it I feel like it's not as bad as, as all that. You just you just kind of watch everything, watch what they're doing and listen to him. And then the monitor would be over there as well. And we kind of keep an eye on that as well. So we know for our overheads what we're doing. All right, so once, once the radiologist is done with all of his fluoro and taking his images, then I'm left with the patient and I go ahead and get my overhead. So I'm gonna start with that process. We'll just move this out of the way for a second. And we'll have you lay, scoot your hips over just a little bit. Make sure my patient is straight. Good. And then we already put the image receptor in here. We're aligned that way and we're in detent. And we are on a 14 by 17 lengthwise. And the first one is going to be my uh, AP axial butterfly. Have you seen before? New, new sticky, so it's super sticky. All right, so on the AP axial butterfly, um, if I blind you, I'm sorry. It's a 30, 30 to 40 degree oblique. I'm gonna go 35. Sorry, patient. And then once it's angled, I have to realign my body. And this is, this is going to straighten out the sigmoid colon. So my central ray is midline, midline, and two inches below asis. So asis is right here, two inches below. I've done this before. <laughs> All right, just like that. You can check ACEs to tabletop heights to make sure the patient's not rotated. And then it's left marker for this, it really for all of them, we're gonna go ahead and use left. And I'm just gonna put it on the patient. It's not ideal to put your marker on the patient. If you have access to the IR, it's probably better to do that. But a lot of the digital equipment, you don't have access to the IR like this. It's, it's a detector array, so it's already built in there. Uh, other techs I know have put it on the table. Personally, I just feel like I'm gonna remember to pull that off. So I usually do put it on the patient, but if you find that some people tell you that's not acceptable, that's, that's valid. Everybody does it a little bit different. So I'm gonna leave her like this and I'm gonna tell her that for all these images, I'm gonna take the picture when you have 
um, blown your breath out, but you follow my instructions when I tell you, okay? Okay. Okay, thank you. So I'm gonna set this at 125 at 3.3. It's gonna take me a minute to get it up there. And this, this would be, um, All right, ready patient? Take in a breath for me. Blow it all out. Hold it out. Beep, good, you can breathe and relax. My next one is gonna be 110 at two. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that. While we're here. I'm gonna take my marker off. Take the angle off and then realign. And then this one, central ray for the AP is iliac crest and midline. So there's midline, diploid, iliac crest. Iliac crest, midline, marker, same spot, left, lower left. All right, same breathing for me, patient. Take in a breath, blow it all out, hold it out, be good. You can breathe and relax. Next we do obliques, marker. What we'll do is have you um, scoot away from me just a little bit Good. and bring your left arm over to your right shoulder. Bend your left knee Good. and roll towards me. Bring my back against that. Straighten that leg out for me. Good. All right, now on the obliques, basically, um, Excuse me, I'm gonna sneak over here. <laughs> We're going to make sure that um, her shoulder and hip are in line. We're looking for a 35 to 40 degree oblique on this. And what these do is they open the upside flexure. So this is the side that's up, this is her left side. So this image is gonna open the left splenic flexure, okay? I still need to get both sides Bend that just a little bit. You okay like that? Mm -hmm. um, I still need to get both sides, but central ray is iliac crest, and then it'll tell you one inch towards the upside because this is the side you have to capture. So one inch up, meaning this line will be one inch from midline. It's a little bit hard to see with her angle, but so one inch towards the side that's up and then iliac crest and then marker on the left side. Same breathing for me, same technique is set. Go ahead, take in a breath for me, blow it all out, hold it out, deep, good, you can breathe. Now what we'll do is I'm going to take this out and let you lay back and come towards me if you would. Good. Move your shoulders. Good. Bring this arm over across. Bend this knee. Actually, you know what? Let's scoot your hip over just a hair. Good. And then roll you away from me. Okay, come back on that. Good. And straighten this leg out. Same thing, make sure that my patient's in line. There we go. Good. And central ray is the same. It's iliac crest and one inch to the upside, but now the right side is up, and this is going to open the right hepatic flexure. 
So I find midline and just one inch to the upside. So one inch from midline. Sorry, I didn't mean to scratch you. And then left marker again on the left side. All right, same breathing. Take a breath. Blow it all out. Hold it out. Be good. You can breathe. I'll be right there. I'm going to go ahead and change this for the lateral. And the lateral rectum is 110 at 20. You're going to be going through both hips. Um, so it's a little bit, I mean, it's actually a lot of bit more than what you would think. So that's set for that. So I'm going to take this out and have you continue to roll up on your left side for me. Good. Scoot your hips back towards me. Good. Shoulders back towards me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. My patient does have a bad shoulder. Two bad shoulders. So I want to make sure her back is nice and straight. Her knees and ankles are on top of each other, which is good. And central ray on this. I'm going to move forward. Central ray on this is ACES and mid-coronal, but this is the only one that we collimate to 10 by 12, 12 lengthwise, 10 cross, because on this one, all we're looking at is the rectum, the rectosigmoid region. So, ACEs, so here's crest. ACEs is right here, so I want this line, in line, coming towards you like that, and then mid-coronal. So I want middle of my patient. Okay, so ACEs and mid-coronal. And I, I do tell you guys that it does not matter how big their backside is because that's not gonna change the location of the rectum no matter how much adipose tissue is back there. And on this patient, we have little to none, so there's left marker up. This would get, now this will get um, the rectal region with the tip. The tip would still be in the patient. It would still be inflated, so you're going to see a foreign body in the rectum, but you'll also get an image of that. All right, one more time, I'm going to have you do that same breathing for me, taking a breath, blow it all out. Hold it out, don't breathe. Be good, you can breathe and relax. That's all. Now, I would leave her on her side like that. I would take my, um, I would take all my images that I did and I would check those and make sure that those came out. If they all came out, I would continue to leave her on her side and I would come back in the room and I would tell my patient that what I'm going to do now is leave you like that and have some of this barium drain out and then we're gonna get you up into the restroom, okay? Okay. All right, so the tip would be in her. Um, the tip would still be, I'm gonna put this between your legs. There you go. The tip would be in the patient. I would drop this to the floor. I would open that and you would start to see the barium drain back into the bag. Um, you'll see kind of a steady flow. And then at some point when, um, cause you're not gonna get it all out. You're only gonna get uh, probably not even half of it, but it'll start to trickle down the tube and you'll realize that there's less coming out. So at that point I would clip that so that um, the bag doesn't leak out, I would pull the cuff later off and I would remove the tip. I would throw all of this um, in the proper receptacle, but we usually keep the cuff later and use those until they're no longer usable. And then I would have my patient, I'm gonna take this out. I would have my patient get up and take her into the restroom and tell her to try and empty as much as she possibly can. Um, I would probably give her some, um, washcloths and towels uh, to kind of clean up if she feels 
like she has any barium on her or if she just sometimes you just don't feel that great after that exam so you just give them a little bit so they can clean up and then when she is ready to come out i will have her back on the table and i will do one more image it's called a post evac where we check and make sure that um, she's gotten rid of the barium or as much as she possibly can and we so i would put her back on the table she could either go on her back or on her stomach whatever protocol is we're just going to put her on her back for this one Scoot over in the middle. Little more. There we go. Good. And then we're going to open this back to a 14 by 17. <clears throat> and this is no different than our AP image. The only difference is this would be annotated with a post evac to tell anyone that's looking at it that this was taken after she evacuated in the bathroom. So it's iliac crest and midline, so midline was pretty good. Move that up to crust. All right, crust and midline, again with the left marker. The technique is still 110 at two on that. I'm gonna have you take in a breath, blow it all out, hold it out, eat. Good, you can breathe and relax. All right, and then at this point, um, I would go ahead and take my marker. I would move all of this out of the way, and then I would talk to my patient and tell her her post instructions, which are the same as they are for any, any fluoro study. Anytime the patient has contrast at all, they get the same post instructions. So what I'm gonna have you do, um, I'm gonna let you sit up. Just sit there for a minute. So since we gave you all that uh, barium, what we're gonna do is have you increase your water over the next few days. So eight to 10 glasses of water on top of what you normally drink. So if you're not a fan of water, you typically do iced tea, coffee, energy drinks, doesn't matter what you drink, just add the water on top of that because what that'll do is kind of flush your system and it'll flush that barrier out. <coughs> so when you do use the restroom, know that your <coughs> stool will be white. <laughs> it's okay. Your stool will be white. So don't let that alarm you. That's just the barium coming out. Once your stool goes back to normal color, you don't have to keep up that water intake, but you're certainly welcome to. It's not gonna hurt anything. But if you don't drink the water, what can happen is that that um, barium, the water gets pulled out of it and it hardens like cement. And then there's really no way other than surgery to get that out. So please keep up the water intake, get that all out. And then, then if you don't wanna do the water, you can. Okay, okay. Any questions for me? No. All right, so I would let her get dressed and I would tell her that her doctor will get those results. Typically within 24 to 48 hours, I would take the patient back out and she would be good to go. Thank you so much.